Our second example of energy conservation that we want to look at is let's consider a solenoid. And this is just going to be a model of an infinite solenoid, a current coming in, wrapping around. So our current wraps around n times and eventually comes out. Um, this is just a sketch of it. And on this side, our current is going in. And on this side, our current looks like that. Um, and what I'd like to do is um, we know, again, we're going to consider this to be an infinite solenoid. And that way, the B fields are 0 on the outside. And what I'd like to do is if i of t is changing in time, and for instance, let's say that di dt is increasing, then we know that the magnetic field that is inside this solenoid, so we'll just write this magnetic field um, b, will be increasing in time. And so there's energy stored in the magnetic field that's increasing in time. And once again, we know that because the current isn't changing, the magnetic field B here is itself a function of time. And therefore, by Faraday's law, there should be an electric field while the B field is changing inside that solenoid. And once again, we're going to try to prove the idea that the power flow into the solenoid will be equal to the negative change of the energy stored in the magnetic field. And again, the negative sign comes in because power flows into a region, negative. And if, power, if the current is increasing, the electric field, the magnetic field will be increasing in time. And so will the energy stored in the magnetic field be increasing in time. So again, our pointing vector is E cross B over mu naught. And so we need to calculate B and E. And for B, we'll use the ampere law where we're considering only very slowly changing currents. And for the electric field, we'll use the Faraday law. So let's remind ourselves how we do the Amperian calculation. Let's just sketch our solenoid here. And let's choose our Amperian loop like this. And we have our current. And we have n turns per unit length. If we make that a length l, B is 0 on the outside. There's a non-zero B on the inside. And we'll call this our k hat direction. Now, if I cho chose a point on this side, P, I'll always choose r hat and theta hat like that. And so I have a right-handed system, r hat cross theta hat is k hat. And my B field, B times L along that leg, is equal to mu naught. The number of turns n times the length of my Amperian loop gives me the number of total turns in there times the current in each turn. And so I get the usual calculation for n i k hat. Now, um, we can write n, if you like, where we're neglecting edge effects as the total number of turns divided by the length of the whole solenoid. In this case, we could call it the height, but we'll leave it that way. Now, here's where we have to apply the Faraday law. So let's draw our picture again. And let's pick a point P here. And now what we want to do is draw, introduce a Faradayan loop. We have magnetic flux that's changing in time. Our Faradayan loop has a radius r. and we're, Recall the Faraday's law is that the line integral of E around a closed path is minus the change in magnetic flux through an open surface with that path as a boundary. And so by the symmetry, the axial symmetry of our solenoid, this is just E times 2 pi r, and here, we have the minus change of the magnetic field. So we can write this as simply dB dt times the area of our Faradayan loop. And I get that my electric field, in this case, will be minus dB dt 
r over 2 theta hat. And now we can substitute in our result for b. So we get minus mu naught n di dt r over 2 theta hat. Now, when I'm calculating the power flow, I want to calculate my pointing vector at a point on the boundary, because I'm going to calculate it on this volume, this closed surface that the solenoid is forming. And so first I'll just calculate it as a function of r, e cross b, and then when we calculate the integral, we'll set r equal to the radius of the solenoid, which I will write as capital R. That's the radius of the solenoid. Uh, let's call that capital A, little a, rather, um, to avoid any mention of resistance. And now we calculate the electric field. So we have minus mu naught di dt r over 2 theta hat. We're dividing by mu naught. And we have to take the vector cross product with the magnetic field, which is mu naught and i k hat. And here again, we have theta hat cross k hat, which in our right-handed system is r hat. But the extra minus sign shows us that, once again, the pointing vector is radially inward. And we get minus, we have 1 mu naught. We have two little n squares. We have i di dt r over 2. And that is in the minus r hat direction. So there's our calculation of the pointing vector at an arbitrary point p. But when we want to do this integral, we want to set r equal to the radius of the solenoid. And just to indicate that, our pointing vector here, s, is pointing in. And that's telling us that power is flowing into the system. The n hat is always outward, minus r hat over this cylindrical surface. There's no power flow in the end caps of this closed surface. This is a closed surface integral. The s dot n hat. This is actually out is plus r hat. Minus r hat dot r hat will give an overall minus sign for this power. And we get a minus s evaluated at r equals a times the surface area of this cylinder, 2 pi a times its height, h. And so what we get when we substitute that in is, remember, we're going to set r equal to a. And the twos are going to cancel. This will be a pi a squared. And I'll have a mu naught n squared i di dt. And I have an a over 2, a 2 pi a. So that's a pi a squared times h. Now, what we want to show is this is equal to the energy stored, the time rate of change of energy stored. Now, when we looked at the capacitor, we looked at the electrical energy stored as q squared over 2c. We could do the same thing with the inductor, where magnetic energy stored is 1 half l i squared, calculate l, by remembering that the total flux over the current is the self-inductance. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently for this one, just for a contrast. We know that the energy stored is equal to the energy density times B squared integrated over the volume. But our B field is uniform, so it's just times pi A squared H. And the rate of change of our energy density, so we can put that in. Let's just calculate that now. We have 1 half mu naught. B is mu naught little n i squared pi a squared h. And once again, I want to differentiate this quantity, du b dt. 
when I differentiate the i's, because it's changing in time, I have an i squared, the twos cancel, I get a, first off I have a mu naught squared upstairs, mu naught downstairs, so I get a mu naught, I get an n squared. Now I'm differentiating that i squared, i di dt, the twos cancel, times the volume of this region, and that's the rate of change of our energy. And when we compare that to our calculation of power flow, once again, we see that this is equal to minus P, and that checks off the energy conservation. As we increase the current in the solenoid, energy flows into the solenoid, and that energy is stored in the magnetic field, which is increasing in time.